man, so much to talk about. But before we do that, let's uh, talk about a very special day that just passed. June 22nd. Yes, June sir. 22nd, 1979, specifically, was the day that the Eve After Dark <laughs> opened its doors. 45 years ago, man. Um, probably seems like a lifetime ago to you. But uh, take me back to that day, man, when Eve After Dark opened up. What were your expectations? You know, just talk to me about how you were feeling. You know, dude, um, back then, Doc, it was I was scared, man. I was nervous because um, this is my first time doing something on my home front, on my Home court, home court, uh, home court field, I should say. Um, I've been doing Alpine for a while. I've been doing everything else around the community, but, but never anything on, in, in, on my home front. I only lived like three blocks from Eve after dark. So it was really home for me. And um, I, you know, me and I mean, Unno was just talking about that before I came on the air. We was talking about, we was laughing about being 45 years, a lot of things happened, boop, boop, boop. And, um, it, it just me, the fairy godmother, her daughter, unknown, sweet Ron Ron, some other folks. Uh, we was there, man. You know, and it was still the first night we had was kind of okay. It was a nice mild party. I mean, the eve of the eve was wide open. The, the, the club, you can see from one side to the other. You can stand in one part of the corner of the club and see the whole thing except for the bathroom. So if you don't have, um, a, if, you, if it's not, a, if it's got to have at least about. 150 people in the Eve for it to look crowded, okay? Uh, the Eve holds 300 people, but again, because it's so wide open, and we have a, I can say we have a wide, wide dance floor. Everything is just, you know, it's a big old square box, and ain't no hide, and ain't no, no, no nooks and crannies, nothing like that right there. And I think he might have had about, about 85 people. There was a cool crowd, but it just wasn't packed yet, and that's how he rocked for the first for the first few months, man, we would, you know, we get 75, maybe a hundred. And again, it wasn't until Cameo showed up, man, that we cracked off and had hit that hit packed out packed it out. And we never looked back after that. A couple uh well, about a week ago, I posted an old G uh, Juneteenth flyer that I was a part of about 28 years ago. And the person in charge at that time of putting the function together was Councilperson Marcin Shaw. Now, I know, I barely knew Marcin Shaw. I knew her more through introduction through one of my mentors back in the day, Lewis. But um, I, I, I do know the name Fred Shaw. You mentioned that name before in the past. I've never I met know. him. But what can you tell yes, us about Marcin Shaw and how did she save, she saved the Eve After Dark, man. Tell us about that story too. Yes, Marcin Shaw was a deputy for... Uh... Uh, Kenneth Hahn at one time, and and I think she, at one time she was even a uh, uh, she was county supervisor or something like that. Anyway, uh, the eve of the dark, we had got shut down after me and that cop got into it. The cop realized we didn't have our uh, we didn't have a youth dance permit, so they shut us down for like six weeks, and we had to go through the process. And they actually voted us down. They voted us down not to open back up, and Marcine Shaw. Uh, single-handedly pitched a bitch and said, hey, we want these kids to have some place to go, blah, 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 and had folks, uh, and they voted, they finally voted, we we got our license. And I, I credit that to her. I met her once before, before she passed. And she, you know, people like that, they do so much for the community, they forget particular incidents. But when I remember, and I dropped Jeffy's name, it rang a bell, because Jeffy was a heavy hitter when it came to politics, especially in the county, because that's where the Eve sits in the county. And um, when, later on, I met her son, Sh Fred, and I realized who Fred was her son. It was just, dude, we just became instant partners, man, and we still carry it today. Fred writes for my newspaper. I talk to him at least once or twice a week. And in fact, I found a flyer that Marcy Shaw had uh, was hosting a Juneteenth event back in 1990-something. Well, if it was the same one I was part of, it was 28 years ago, so that would have been what 96 might have been it doc and I, the yeah. flyer was on, the, the flyer was on the uh it was on the um internet in fact i have it i'm trying to figure out what my why my uh why my uh screen doesn't download like it's supposed to but i i i downloaded it so i can send it to fred and i know i kept it someplace but yeah a whole flyer with marcin shaw on the flyer talking about june juneteenth Way back then, so yeah, 
Shout out to Marcin, rest her soul. Oh, you guys can't see it, but that's, that's the flyer that's I, I'm talking about. Yeah, that's the yeah. one I was part of, man. I actually <laughs> wrapped wow. it at that function. Wow. I have video of it to this day. I have video of it. it was, now it's, it's digital, but I, I took video and I digitized it. So, yeah, man. Wow. Great woman. Great woman. I remember her. I, I, like I said, I only knew her through introduction through someone else, but from what I understand, she did a lot for the city of Compton. Yep. Um, she, was, uh, she was involved in the county. In the, um, Compton is in the county. And uh, that is her, uh, that's her claim to fame, Doc. Send me that flyer again, because I can't seem to find it yeah. in my downloads anywhere. But I remember because I sent it to Fred. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you right now as we're talking. All right, cool, cool. cool. Yeah, I'll definitely send it over to you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let, let's continue, man. Um, hold on one second. Let me hit send. Hold on. Yes, yeah, so I want to talk to you about a couple of specific things tonight. But before we do that, I want to talk about a tweet that went viral this week. And I just want your thoughts on it, Lonzo. A uh, female went viral this week for her tweet. I'm going to read it to you, and I just want your thoughts. Her post simply said, if a nigga work a nine to five, he lame as fuck, end quote. You know, Meanwhile, her picture, she got fake everything, lashes, boot, like everything is fake on her. Well, she know a brother that works nine to five, he can't afford all her accessories, okay? Uh, he can pay rent, he can pay car notes, he can buy groceries, pay utilities, but that extra uh, that she going to require, that HOA that she required, that HOA payment that, that she needs <clears throat> to uh, to uh, look the way she looks, and we, we, we came up with HOA today, you know, um, HOA in, in the real estate terms mean homeowner association. <coughs> My partner and I called it holes on holes on accessories. Okay. And you got holes on accessories, lips, extra lips, extra eyelashes, extra, extra nails, extra hair, extra ass, extra titties. That shit costs money. And you put yourself into a position of maintenance. That a brother, unless he got a real big ass, getting a real big ass job, got a real big ass job, getting a, got a big ticket job, he can't afford you. But I tell you what, it was even worse than that. You can't afford yourself. And that's where the problem comes in at. You need a sponsor. You like a, a little league football team in the hood. You need a sponsor, okay? And a brother with a nine to five, he, he, he can't afford to sponsor you. And we were talking, me and some brothers talking about that today. How about passing out papers? We had the same conversation about how uh, so many women put themselves in a position of unaffordability for them for themselves. Now you do this, and you got two or three kids. 